If you've gone outside recently, you might have realized that the heat index has actually been over 100 degrees on average for the past couple of weeks. If you spend more than a few minutes outside, your skin starts getting a little burn from the sun and you start sweating. And while this is the body's natural way of defending itself against overheating, what it does is it takes water from inside the body and it takes it out of it. And after a while, you start feeling groggy and you're not really sure why, and your head starts hurting, and these are signs that you're dehydrated. But dehydration is a deadly but easily avoidable problem, and I think that with education, we can actually improve community health and reduce mortalities caused by dehydration. But you can't start treating a problem if you don't know that you have one. Dehydration ranges from mild to severe, depending on how much water you have already lost. And according to Dr. Mandel in What is Dehydration in News Medical, the moment that you start feeling thirsty or have a dry mouth is the beginning of dehydration, and this happens at about 2% of fluid body loss. According to Physiopedia, a peer-reviewed source, uh, once you hit about 5-6% to of fluid loss, then you start having a headache or nausea, you start feeling groggy and sleepy, and then with 10 to 15 percent, more serious things happen, like you have muscle spasms, you go into delirium a little bit, your skin may shrivel, and then you can do the tent test to check if you have dehydration. And then just not very good things. About 15 percent or more is when it's fatal at that amount of fluid loss, and there's really no go back, going back from it. But once you feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated, and a lot of people don't know that. But treatments actually vary depending on how much fluid you have already lost from your body. And according to Physiopedia, once again, they remind us that the oral rehydration solution, Pedialyte, is the best way to go for little kids. But what you shouldn't do is you should definitely avoid giving them things like milk, sodas, gelatin, juices, because those can actually make the problem a lot worse than it already is. And treating the elderly, water is the best thing that is recommended for rehydrating them again. And then, in treatment of athletes, water is recommended at the first signs and symptoms of dehydration, followed by sports drinks to increase their electrolytes again. But what they shouldn't do is they should definitely avoid salt tablets because they can cause hypernatremia, which is a whole another problem. But for severe dehydration, you should administer IV fluids to an individual in a medical setting. In the Mayo Clinic, one of the most important medical sources available reminds us that there are complications that can be caused from dehydration, such as cerebral edema, heat injury, seizures, hypovolemic shock, and kidney failure. All of those are serious problems and you don't want them. But there are certain conditions that might make you more susceptible to dehydration than somebody else. Once dehydration is resolved, it is always wise to figure out exactly why you got dehydrated in the first place. But infants and elderly are a lot more likely to get dehydrated because they actually have a smaller fluid content in their body than an average adult does. So it's always wise to make sure they have some water even if they're not feeling thirsty. But the Rehydration Project informs us that dehydration caused by diarrhea is one of the most serious reasons why children worldwide are not surviving. And this year alone, about 2.2 million children are going to die from dehydration, and 80% of them are under the age of 2, which is really tragic. But certain electrolyte imbalances can also cause dehydration, as can certain infectious disease diseases that cause vomiting and diarrhea. But our culture in itself is more likely to experience dehydration than we should be. John Erickson writes in 75% of Americans may suffer from chronic dehydration, according to doctors, that Americans reportedly buy more soda than water. And we could kind of see that in our culture. But all of these sodas are also mildly dehydrating to the body instead of rehydrating, so they're actually making the problem a lot worse. And it's estimated that about 75% of Americans are not hitting the recommended 10 cups of water a day standard set by the Institute of Medicine. And we are going down a slippery slope, and most people don't realize that the slippery slope leads to severe trauma. And while we might not like water as much as we like other beverages, don't forget to have at least one cup of water today. Cheers, guys. And here's my next card.